Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy, oh, my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo and Joe Bear up in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys. This does not work without you guys. So let's get open for business here. And let's wake up the football gods on this Monday morning hangover. Damn. You know what? I'm going to start this Monday off looking at some positives, okay? I'm going to make you feel a little bit better right now. I know it hurts, man, losing a game like that, seeing our secondary literally leaving guys wide open, seeing Russell Wilson getting his 14th touchdown pass of this young season and losing up there in Seattle. You know, it sucks. It stinks. It's terrible. But, you know, I'm going to take this much away, and I, I, I can hear the trolls now. The trolls are, are already out. They've been laying in wait talking about the garbage-ass team. And I say, just give it a little more time because the positive I have to look at is this. On a day that the officials were against you, on a day that you had mistakes that you are messing up that are literally leading to points to the other team, we ended up still being able to, going down the last play of the game, still having a chance to win. I mean, think about it. Because we had a fumble on the one-yard line, we ended up giving up two points for a safety because Zeke couldn't get out the end zone. We missed two extra points. Okay, that's four points right there. We ended up going for two, missing that. That's six points right there directly that we caused against us. And, guys, it's just the way it is. Some days you got it, some days you don't. And I won't even go into the wide open wide receiver. So there, there's there's all of that stuff, but we still had an opportunity. Our quarterback, which is key, I want you to look at this right now because Dak Prescott's got almost 1,200 yards already passing the season. I know stats are for losers. I get you. I understand. I, okay, and all that. But if you don't have a quarterback that can at least produce – then you, 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 you're you still going to lose. At least you know, okay, we got a guy that can move these guys and move the chains down the field. If we can take care of some of the other stuff, if we can do better in blocking, if we can get the running game going, if we can cover wide receivers, if we can not get hosed by the officials, then we got a chance to be able to beat anybody. But the funny thing about the NFL is anybody can beat you and you can lose to anybody and you can beat anybody. I just want to dig into this a little bit deeper. If I can, I just want you to take a quick peek at it as we break this down. Because it's actually incredible when you think of the numbers that we are averaging 396 passing yards a game. Let me say that again. We are averaging 396 yards passing a game. Five TDs, two interceptions. How does that compare? It, it's kind of crazy because... There's only two quarterbacks over 1,000, Dak Prescott and Josh Allen. And Dak has 150 yards more than Josh Allen. It's crazy because we'll go all the way down here. I just want you to take a peek at Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz down here, 59 completion percentage, 737 yards. And look at this. 5.6 yards per pass play. Dinkin and Duncan. Dinkin and Duncan. That's Carson Wentz. But but that's that's not, not the real possible news. Okay. We got a lot of problems on defense. I think a lot of the problems on defense are new coachings, new schemes, new players. Everything's new. And mix that up with no offseason. It would be one thing if we had cornerbacks that just physically aren't able to keep up with the receivers, that literally they just get blown by. Like I'm in coverage, okay? I just don't physically run fast enough to cover them. That's one thing, that you just have talent that's above and beyond that's beating you. I don't think that that's necessarily the case. It looks like guys don't know where the hell they're supposed to be. That there's actually hesitation and that they're thinking 
about what they're supposed to do. And understand in football, the reason we used to practice and practice and practice and practice, have two-a-day practices and special teams practice in the middle was to get that repetition in there. So you did not think that automatically your body would have muscle memory and know where it's supposed to go when you hear whatever play is called. Or as you take that first step that instinctively you know when that center goes to the left, you go and you fight force, you fight through the block. Because if he's trying to hook you, that means the ball's going over there. So that means that's where I got to get my ass. When I look and I see a receiver going down the field on a touchdown and I see two guys right here in the same zone that the switch off the guys whose assignment it was to take that guy doesn't understand that he thinks that this is my zone as opposed to my zone is with that guy back there. It's not about the players right now not being able to do the scheme as it is the players don't know the scheme yet. If you're still seeing the same thing by week eight, nine, okay, then, then it's the players. It's the players. But you have to at least give them time to start understanding the system. And I think it will get better going down because Lord knows it can't get much worse than what we saw yesterday. But that's not what my bright spot was. This is actually my bright spot up here because this is phenomenal. Right now, you have to have the odds on favorite to be NFL comeback player of the year lost in this whole situation of, you know, us losing yesterday was Alden Smith getting his fourth sack, his fourth sack in three games. Let me say that again, four sacks in three games in his contract, which is chump change, literally chump change. Demarcus Lawrence's deal is about six and a half times what Alden Smith's deal is. Alden Smith is on pace for 21 and a half sacks. Let me say that one more time. Alden Smith is on pace for 21 sacks for the season. That's rarefied air to get 20 sacks. He is on a better pace than his first two years of football, where he got, I think, 42 sacks in 43 games. Alden Smith has not lost a step at all. If anything, he's become more of a beast. You may look back and say, this is the biggest bargain in football right now that you got this guy at worst case at three and a half million dollars. That's if he gets 14 sacks and I'm not betting against him not to get those. He is on a tear. I'm at least seeing life at the defensive line. There, there were some, some decent plays by DeMarcus Lawrence. Not enough for my taste. I, I want to see some sacks. I want to see him knocking quarterbacks around. He, he had a hurt knee yesterday, so we'll, we'll give him that. But I'm beginning to see Tristan Hill, maybe we ought to call him B.A. for bad attitude. He's a little edgy, and he, he's a little gritty. He kind of borders the line of getting kind of dirty in there. But when you're talking about playing in the middle, Dude, you get hangry. You got to understand, when you're playing in the middle of that line, I remember one of the first practices I ever had as a nose tackle, excuse me, nose guard. I played offensive line, so I didn't know jack about defensive line when I got to JMU. You get hit from so many different ways and so many different people. You're lined up over the center. Of course you get the center hits you. Hits you straight up. He tries to hook you. Of course he used to do the chop block back in my day. Then you get hit by the center and the guard. Double team trying to blow you out of the point of attack. Of course you also get double teamed by this guy sometimes, right? So you got to be worried about getting hit by the center, by the guard, and this guard. Okay, got it. Got to work about those three guys. Then sometimes you have what's known as a wham block where the tight end's in motion. 
you don't know the tight ends of motion because you're looking at the football that's six inches in front of your nose. And you got a guy's helmet that's right here. But this tight end's in motion. And at the snap of the ball, the center goes across your face, and here comes the tight end and hits you in the air hole. Okay, got it now. Got it. I get it by the center. The guard, the guard, the tight end in motion. Oh, but then, of course, there's sometimes, you know, back in the day, you had fullbacks. Sometimes it's a fullback that comes in and hits you. Gotcha. So I got the center. I got the guard. I got the guard. I got the tight end. I got the fullback. And what I learned the hard way in practice, not a game, not a game now. We're talking about practice. I got hit. Well, let, let, me, let me describe it. The center went across my face. I looked over here for the guard coming through. The guard went out to the linebacker, okay? I looked for the fullback. Fullback, he's gone this way. I look upfield. I see Warren Marshall. Warren Marshall, our running back, who's about 6'1 and about 230. He's coming at me, and I'm thinking, I'm getting the tackle. I stand up in the hole, and here comes Adam Burkett who's about 6'3", about 300 pounds, the tackle, he comes down and he traps and hits me in the ear hole. So when Tristan Hill kind of gets a little hangry in there, you got to understand that you, you just want to punish somebody because you take so much abuse. Now, he's got to be careful because he, he may get fined for a late hit. You kind of look at that rollover and see maybe he kind of twisted the running back a little bit in there. You, you don't want to cross the line where you, you're, you're hurting people. And you don't want to cross the line where you're hurting your team by getting penalties. But I love the tenacity and the edge that's out there. And that gives me hope for the season. The other thing that gives me hope is, guys, yeah, we lost to Seattle. It sucks. It stinks. But guess what? We ain't played anybody in our division. And I don't know if you've looked at the Washington franchise, the Giant franchise, and the Eagles, we still have the Browns. We got Cincinnati. Dudes. Dudes. It's a long season. There's a lot of games to be played. A lot of games to be played. And as bad as we played, this is what they were saying in the locker room for Philadelphia. Well, what happened was that second game, we got our ass kicked, or the second half. We just got our ass totally kicked. We couldn't do diddly poo offensively. We couldn't make a first down. We couldn't run the ball. We didn't try to run the ball. We couldn't complete a pass. We sucked. The second half, we sucked. We couldn't stop the run. Every time they got the ball, they went down and got points. We got our ass totally kicked in the second half. That's what it boiled down to. It was a horse performance in the second half. Horse I'm totally embarrassed and totally ashamed. Coaching, we're all, all, our coaching did a horrible job. The players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked in that second half. It sucked. It stunk. Okay. That's right. We could be the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, we got a lot to talk about. Hope you tune in tonight for our live stream at 9 o'clock Eastern. We definitely have to figure out how to get everything fixed on the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you later.